Now I'd like to call on stage Mr. Bijoy, uh, Mr. Hyun Suk Park, and Mrs. Camila Mai from Korea Registration. pursue my PhD, so I completed and I got placement in Korean Register of Limit. So in this occasion, what I really want to say, because I passed your uh, this uh, phase and I reached this level. So here some people are taking uh, PowerPoint, because we, I, I myself know, because I came from Seoul. Early morning we woke, woke up, yesterday till midnight, some people drank. Some people were charged. <laughs> so after that, early morning, we reached uh, our destination. And uh, not, not destination means uh, we took the bus and we slept. We reached here. I know at present what the sort of mind we have. Because we all are tired. That's what I mean. But to be frank, I'm saying that you, this group, <coughs> You are the professional which are selected from the whole professionals in the country of Brazil. Am I true? Yes. So, you must think that you are lucky and fortunate to be in Korea. And you must use this opportunity to understand, to learn, not only the culture, the way, the hard work that Korea put to uh, to bring their country to the top of the world. Actually, as an Indian, I know Brazil only through one, as an engineer, uh, Petrobras. You know, right? Yeah. yeah. It's very famous in the world. And second is football. <laughs> More than that, we don't know anything. But I know Brazil is a big country. And if a team of 11 football players with an off-field players, maybe a food Brazilian team, for example, maybe there are 50 or 100. If they can bring the Brazil in the top of the world, in the rank list, top, you professionals in the future can bring Brazil in the field of technology and engineering. I am definitely, I am 100% sure about that. For that, you have to maintain this uh, relationship with Korea uh, forever. And I expect that you enjoy your time with the, the Korean and I wish you all a bright future. And now to introduce before uh, Ms. Camila take the presentation, in the engineering side of you, actually our company, the Korean Register of Shipping, it is the domestic certification, ship certification company uh, which certified ships new ships before it's before uh, going to sea. Once a new ship, if a new ship has to go to sea, it should be certified by a, an authority. So we are working as the authority, which in our company we have uh, around 900 employees in and outside Korea. So we have the research departments, we have the survey departments, engineering department, it's very wide. So here, before she start this seminar, 
I, will, I, I just want to inform you that the simple word risk. Everyone knows what is risk, right? Before we step down, when we climb down the staircase, we know the risk if we just absent-minded. You start from Korea, Incheon Airport to Brazil, Rio, or uh, other airports. You are just sitting, taking ticket and sitting in the plane, and you are reaching, you are landing very safely. You don't know what are the risks they took to take you and to uh, drop you at your home. Nobody knows the risk. You are taking a car. You are driving. You know the driving. You have the driving license, but you don't know how the car works. What are the risks behind that? Everything same. But in between all those things, there are disasters happen. There were accidents happen. You know, uh, even the World Trade Center, it's totally, now it's called the zero ground, right? And recently our Korean Air, uh, not Korean Air, the Asian Airlines, we had a small uh, accident. So there are many accidents related with any structure, whether you are a civil engineer or electrical, electronics, whatever it is, there is a risk which has to be analyzed. So here, uh, and before I um, pass to Camila, I must say we are very thankful uh, to Brazilian embassy and to have three of your students to uh, work in our company as intern, and they did. We support them to our maximum. We did our very best. Thank you. Yeah to make them to be one of our family. I am sure that in one or one and a half months, we can't do anything. You will study something here and you will go to Brazil, just you see your parents, you forget whatever happened in Korea. That is for true. Sorry. That is for true. Right? Am I right? <laughs> Nobody can agree, but I know. <laughs> I can see the faces here. <laughs> so, um, uh, before he starts, I must say, once more, sir, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think other than Brazilians and Koreans, uh, no other foreigners are there except me. <laughs> so, it's a great pleasure for me to be here <laughs> on behalf of CARE. So, now I will pass to Ms. Kamila. Thank you very much and have a nice day. And uh, I think one of the senior officials informed that today you have a barbecue party. And I think Many have already been to such occasions in Korea. So you enjoy your best. Rock. Have a nice day. Thank you. I didn't recognize that he gave us a speech for a long time. <laughs> okay, uh, from now on, let me record uh, this presentation. Uh, let me introduce our interns. Uh, where is the Fabiano? Please stand in your seat. Uh, okay, Rafael. Yeah. Okay, let me introduce our three speaker uh, on behalf of Kia. Okay, first. I'm an architecture student back in Brazil. Here I'm studying at Hanyang, also doing architecture. It's not naval architecture, besides uh, Korea works with, uh, deals with most of the uh, naval part, but I'm not naval architecture, just architecture. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Mr. Ambassador, the Brazilian Embassy, uh, Mr. Daniel, all the support that you're giving us. It's really important for us. Uh, also, my Brazilian colleagues present here, the company's uh, representatives. Um, it's really important for us, um, the support <coughs> that the companies are giving us. Me uh, in KR, and I have, I have had an amazing experience this last three weeks. They were really uh, helpful and patient with me. Uh, also, Mr. Fabiano. So, thank you all. Uh, I'm going to introduce pretty fast, hopefully. Um, so this is basically the, the content. I'm going to explain a little bit about KR. Maybe I'll, some of you don't know what it is. Uh, about uh, in these two 
assessment and the Brazilian market is basically what I have done uh, in the company this past three weeks. Okay, uh, so KR it's quite a big company here. So they have several departments like drawing approval. Everything is about the certification process that they have. So they have to make sure that some project that they are analyzing it's safe. So they have the drawing approval, that is the part of the planning and before the construction. Uh, the certification service, that is basically uh, the biggest part. Uh, the survey service after the uh, technical consultants work. Um, also the naval service, because they're really traditional in this part of shipping. They have some kind of uh, business and administration part of some ports uh, here in Korea. Uh, I must mention that they also have several, um, quite a lot of uh, overseas offices, also one in Brazil and Sao Paulo. Uh, uh, the research and development uh, uh, department, and also some subsidiary for the engineering service. So um, they are part of this International Association of Classification Society, which is quite important. Uh, association for the, the classification society around the world. There are, uh, as I can remember, 10 uh, <coughs> companies as Korean around the world that can do this, that are certified to do this kind of job. So it's really important. Uh, so I have been around this area here in Korea, Register of Shipping. It's the certification part, as we explained. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they do the certification since the design, the construction part, because as an architect, and maybe some of you here engineers, you know that the, the project, the plan, uh, a lot of times the, the, the construction part is not as <coughs> it was supposed to be, so there's a few errors that can do some kind of damage at the end of the process. So it's important to certify the construction part also. Materials, equipment, and maintenance of the ship, of course. Um, and wind power, uh, wind power energy, I must mention, my friend Fabiano is working in this department. Uh, they do the certification for the turbines and the, tower of the towers of the wind farms, also here in Korea. So, uh, I hope it's not boring. I'm going to be as fast as possible. Uh, I, I thought it would be interesting for me to show you what I've been doing, not just the company, but the, the real daily study that I have done. Uh, so for risk assessment, what it is, is the study, uh, identifying, studying, analyzing, and evaluating the risks of some projects. So basically, they, they got a project, and they have to analyze all the risks involved on it. Um, so the consequences, uh, because of uh, because of the identification of the risks, they can uh, develop some kind of um, methods to try to reduce the risk or minimize the consequences of this risk. This is quite important. If you think about a big, po a big project like uh, oil extraction platforms or ships or submarines, this is like a major um, part of the of the project. Uh, so this is a risk analysis diagram, it's really fast just to have to, to identify the risk and then you do, they do the uh, frequency analysis and the consequence analysis. Here it's, it's, it, it's going to sound really theoretical, but there are a lot of math involved. I'm not really aware of all the calculation parts, so I'm going to explain as simple as possible. As of course, in three weeks, I couldn't learn really deeply about the math, just about the theoretical part. Uh, so after that, they did the risk evaluation, which is the most, most important part. Um, they compare the risk criteria, so they have several uh, criteria that they, they, they got from previous data or some kind of um, uh, database that they have. Uh, and then they compare that with the risk of the project that they found. If the risk, uh, the real risk, the risk of the project is higher, then they have to go to, to, go to the design amendment. So have to, they have to change something in the design uh, to make it safer. Or if it's okay, then you can go to the next phase or you can uh, certify the, the project. Uh, 
Um, so there are several kinds of risk assessment. Um, qualitative risk analysis, so the hazard is basically the uh, pre-identification of the risks, that all the risks that you can find. Um, the hazard is the same thing as the rest. The hazard is just a little bit more focused on the systems, on the process also. Uh, the system reliability analysis, you have the, uh, this, there are several, I just selected two of them that I thought might be quite interesting for you, I don't know, because of the, the engineering major that most of you have. Um, the RAM uh, is the efficiency study, so all the projects that we do, for example, the oil, plat oil extraction plat platform, um, we design to make it work 100%. But, of course, in the real, real world, nothing works 100%. So this study is made to calculate, estimate, the, the real percentage of loss that you have in the working process. It's really interesting. Uh, and then you have the ESSA, which is basically the must-not-fail system. This means, for example, that uh, this is a system that controls the oxygen or the doors or the communication system. So if everything goes wrong, for example, in a submarine or a ship, this system is the one that is going to uh, theoretically keep everybody alive. So this is a most not fail system. It's also important to consider that in this kind of risk assessment analysis. Uh, the quantitative risk analysis, it, it's really easy. The, the name is um, explained itself. Uh, it's a fire and explosion risk analysis, evacuation and escape risk analysis. Transportation is also quite important when you think about the oil extraction platforms because of the helicopters that you uh, take the crew and the supplies every time. So uh, it's the, mo the more you use the helicopter, the higher it gets the chance for you to have some kind of accident with it. Uh, the drop objects also uh, focus on the oil extraction platforms. Uh, ship collision, of course. And then we have the structural reliability analysis, the load uh, resistant factor, uh, which is basically the weight that you put in the structure and what is, uh, what is the response of the structure for this weight. Uh, and the CSR, which is basically the standard created by this uh, biggest association that they have of their certification uh, companies. Uh, I must mention that before I came to Korea, this is all I knew about risk. Uh, because we use that in architecture, so uh, in uh, engin civil engineering. So I knew this one, and now I expand my, my knowledge. So even though it's not really my major, I'm, I'm not a naval architecture, but uh, this expand my, my, my knowledge, and this is quite important for me also. So these are more um, analysis, just FSA, the methodology they use. DLA is to categorize the failure condition. They use that after an accident. So this is the analysis they use after some kind of event. Uh, this is the statistics that they use because when I, as I said, when I talked, it might seem really theoretical, but it's quite like a lot of math behind it. So these are some statistics that, uh, statistics that they use. Uh, these are the ones that might be uh, important. Uh, Interesting for you guys, uh, the CVA is a cost and benefit analysis, of course, it's, uh, the name is really simple to understand. Uh, HRA, this is an important one because it, uh, it counts, it tries to count the probability of some kind of human error. And this is really important because most of the systems, the failure, it's about the human errors, not the, the system failure. Uh, and you have the alarm, which is as slow as reasonable practical. You can understand this graph here really fast. Uh, this is the face, uh, this is the, the, the safe area. So if you are in this area here, you don't need to worry about any kind of, any kind of risk. This is the unacceptable area. This means that if you are in this area here, it's really unsafe. You should do something to make the project safer. Most of the projects are in this big area here in the middle, and you should be as slower as possible. Uh, but you have to think about also the economics and the system that they are available for you, so you should be as slow as, as possible. This is what means. Okay, uh, now risk assessment on submarines. They, had, they did this work for 12 months um, last year, uh, so it was a military submarine. 
uh, and they have to, to evaluate the diving safe system. Uh, it was divided into three phases. The first phase was a problem definition, so they had to identify the risks of the, the submarine uh, and also uh, try to write it down, uh, register that. Uh, the problem analysis, they had, so after they identified the risk, they had to do all the math behind it, all the probability uh, calculus about it, uh, each risk. Uh, and then they do the problem solving, which is basically see if the, the, the submarine was safe or not, and which system uh, needed to be improved. Uh, here's a graph. I, this one is really interesting because um, I found this graph and I was trying to understand it. Uh, here is the risk <coughs> for one person. This, this graph here, uh, it shows the risk for one individual inside the submarine. So here are the, the commercial vessels that we call. Uh, this one here, the, the, the lower purple one, is a cruise, you know, the vacation ship that we take. Uh, the green one, which we can see that it, the, the probability of something happening is quite higher, is the oil extraction platform. And this one here, I'm not sure if you can see, is the submarine. So we can see that actually the submarine is safer than a cruise. And I would never think about it, because if you think in a submarine, it should be unsafe. And then I asked my, my mentors, why would that happen? You should be safer in a submarine than in a, in a vacation ship. And then he said it was because the submarine has several safety systems. So they have several layers of safety system. And <coughs> the, the, the cruise would look like me. So it's actually safer to be in a submarine. If you want to travel, go take a submarine. The Italian one is really good. Um, here, uh, it's uh, just the uh, wellhead platforms. They, did, they also did that risk for, uh, they did this study for nine months. Uh, this is a fixed platform, so it's not the, the kind that, not most of the kind that we have in Brazil. We have the really deep ones because of the press out and everything that I'm going to talk about later. But uh, this is a fixed one, so it goes until 500 meters and below the sea level. Uh, and they had to do the fire and water damage calculation. Uh, this is the REM study. I don't know if you remember that. This is the efficiency study. So here you can see, this is only the schematic connection because one platform is connected to the others. So they have to understand all the systems of the platform, which is which system is connecting to the other one so they can understand which risk in, is involved in what. Uh, so this here is the performance. You can see that it's not 100%, so it's 990.664. Um, and this is important for the company to know that uh, which kind of loss they're going to have because we're talking about the huge amount of money, so they want to know exactly how much the oil platform is going to produce before they build it. And here you can see that the, the production, uh, each five years, the production is really low. Uh, we can see here that uh, I also asked my, asked my, my colleagues and they said that it was because of the maintenance. So they have to, to uh, maybe change some kind of, uh, do the maintenance on the oil, oil platform and that's why the, the production go really low in this period. Uh, flare explosion and gas inspection. This is just to show you uh, if some kind of explosion, ha if there is some kind of uh, uh, explosion, they have to to try to estimate the the, the radius of the explosion, the the upper pressure, and also the toxic gas contraction. All of this to make the the oil platform uh, as safer as possible. <coughs> Um, this is just the possible uses. They don't use. They don't do the aircraft analysis. It's just some kind of uh, application that you might have for the risk analysis. Uh, so also aircraft. They also have this this kind of um, analysis. Also, uh, yeah. Here you can see uh, there are the same graphs. The which which kind of uh, risk are involved in. Uh, for each risk, you have a consequences. You, you can ha you you have to try to reduce the, the the risks and the consequences of that risk. Uh, 
Uh, this is the last part. Actually, this was the study that I did for uh, the first week. Um, and this is uh, about the Brazilian market. Uh, there is another department, a little bit separated. So I don't know if probably most of the Brazilians here are aware of that. But there is the priest health area in Brazil. So we have this area. Here is the pre salt area, which is the oil extraction area in Brazil. Uh, and it was found a few years ago. And it's quite complex area to extract oil because it's really deep and you have this salt layer, which is really uh, unstable. So, um, but the problem that uh, KR is involved is not about the oil extraction. Uh, the the oil platforms are really far away from the onshore and this is a problem because they have to transport the crew um, every two weeks, I think, from the onshore to the platform and from the platform to the onshore. So uh, this is 300 kilometers, the distance. Uh, and also they have, uh, they, Petrobras was worried about some kind of accident because if there is an, an accident on this platform here, it would take a lot of time to to rescue the people or do some kind of action, it would take a lot of time to go on, to take to, to go there to reach the platform. So they were they were thinking about the solution and they came up with this idea. It's a very large floating structure. This means that they want to do some kind of secondary platform in the middle of this distance here um, to use it as a, a logistics base for for. Uh, the platform, the pre-salt platforms. So they wanna, they wanna do a kind of a hospital of emergency rooms there. So if you have an accident, you, have, you can take people there, and it's much more uh, fast. Um, and also, you can you can transport people from from the onshore to the to this platform uh, through boats like fast boats, I, I'm not sure about the name in English, but it's like a fast boat. And then from this platform, you take the, the crew can take the, the helicopter to, the, to the, the oil extraction platform, the real platform. So it makes it easier, the, the transportation. Uh, also really cheaper, because it's cheaper to, to move a boat than a helicopter through the, all this distance. And also it's safer because, um, because of the they, they don't, they're not going to, to spend that much time on the helicopter. Uh, so what is, K, what is KR related with that? They're related with that because uh, only three countries in the whole world has this technology to make such a big floating structure. And it's Netherlands, uh, South Korea, and uh, Japan. So they are kind of competing to try to get this project because it's going to be a really huge project made from pet, uh, contract for um, for pet, pet for us. So um, KR is trying to 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 close the deal with Brazilian government and Petrobras. So that's why, and I thought it would be interesting for you to know. So yeah, thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me.